Remember, Allah uh, creates everybody with a package of qualities, capabilities, and a package of weaknesses. The success, we should tell our children is this as well. The successful one is the one who's figured out their capabilities so that they can use them for whatever they want. And they've been able to understand their weaknesses and harness them. If you look around, behavioral issues, akhlaq issues, is because people have not recognized what their weakness are. Some people have recognized their strengths. They're really using that, but they have not recognized their weakness. Some people have not even recognized their, their strength. They're just losers or their weakness. Right? So we need to recognize both. And the sooner the better. Successful people, that's who they are. They've recognized both and they've harnessed them in the right way and they've thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Ibn Ata'illah al-Iskandari who gives us these wonderful wisdoms that we can benefit from and uh, uh, it's definitely for me but inshallah for you uh, those who've been following this along uh, it's really gives you a better perspective of who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So may Allah reward him abundantly and everybody else that's tried to and made an attempt to get this to us and this knowledge to us. And may Allah bless all of our mashayikh up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So today it's more of a summary of uh, the last several aphorisms that we've been reading. This is what he says. It's aphorism number 203, page 108. He says, كَمَا لَا يُحِبُّ الْعَمَلَ الْمُشْتَرَكِ كَذَلِكَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْقَلْبَ الْمُشْتَرَكِ الْعَمَلُ الْمُشْتَرَكِ لَا يَقْبَلُهُ وَالْقَلْبُ الْمُشْتَرَكِ لَا يُقْبِلْ عَلَيْهِ So, until now we were discussing actions which are not purely done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, just as he, yani Allah, does not love the deed possessed of associationism, associationism, in other words, just as he does not love any deed that has anybody else associated other than Allah in it, like we did it for somebody else, just like he does not love that. So similarly, he does not love the heart that has somebody else in there as well. And a deed that is done for somebody else must come from a heart that has others in there. Because if there was nobody but Allah in the heart, then the deed has to be pure because... That would be a pure vessel. You have a dirty vessel and you're trying to put some pure substance in there like milk or something. You're going to corrupt it. It's not going to come out right. That's very, very simple. Somebody just contacted me recently who's studying the deen. And uh, something that their teacher told them has struck them. That you're studying all of this deen but until you don't pre prepare your heart and purify your heart then it's like you're putting into you into a dirty vessel, pure, uh, pure honey, for example, pure milk, a pure kind of juice, and you're corrupting it. You're not going to have the same benefit. When you taste it, it's not going to be the purity that you're looking for because you've corrupted it and polluted it. So that's why he said that just like he doesn't accept actions which have others intended in there, he also does not like a heart that has others uh, situated in there. So then he says uh, about the two, he says, as for the deed that has others associated in it, he just doesn't accept it. And as for the heart which is possessed of others, he does not draw near to it. He doesn't pay attention to it. He does not approach it. He does not become concerned with it. Meaning he doesn't value it in any way. لا يقبل علي. It's not something that he puts his attention towards to give it some kind of reward or something like that. He doesn't, he doesn't care about it much. So as you can see, this is a, a summation of what we've been reading so far. Al-amal al-mushtarak, as he says, the action which, uh, which is uh, shared. So it's not purely for Allah, there's other things in there, it's shared. Just like we don't like things which are shared usually, we like things for ourselves, so you can't have something. Imagine, imagine having a coat that you share, right? Or a jacket that you share, subhanAllah. So he's saying that an action which is shared which has some other pollution in there, is the one that has any kind of uh, 
that has any kind of egotistic desire associated with it. Whether that egotistic desire, and again, this is all clarification I've done before, so I don't have to go through it in detail. Whether it's a dunyawi or ukhrawi, which basically means that you're doing it for something in the dunya, like we mentioned that you're becoming pious because you've seen that pious people are well respected. That's your reason for, that's our reason for becoming pious. Or you're pious because you get discounts and you get free uh, gifts and so on. Right? That would be a dunyawi benefit. And um, a benefit of the hereafter would be that you do it because I want paradise. I want those hurul ain man. They, they sound really cool. They like out of this world. So that's what I want. Now, you, you can understand, you know, that Allah is not involved in that, is it? I mean, yes, Allah is there in the back of the picture somewhere, but the real maqsad. All of these are literally just to get us away. So those who lean are that if men desire haram in the world, despite them having something pure at home, but then they desire haram, then think of it this way, that look, if I forgo this haram, suffice with the halal, Allah will actually then give you pleasure in the halal. And then He'll give you the reward in the hereafter as well. So it's really just for that. That's really what it's for. They're just bonuses on the side as perks, but the ultimate... Purpose is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what he's saying. Now, inshallah, I mean, if you heard that for the first time, then you'd be really confused at what's going on here. But I think he's given us the understanding of... So that's why he's saying that any heart which has any of these desires associated, that's any... Sorry, any deed which has... Uh, which is done for any of these shared desires, that's a corrupted one. And then he says the heart which is mushtarak, which is shared, is the one in which there is love for anything but Allah. Anything but Allah. So he's saying the deed which is going to have something else accompanying it, that's going to be a corrupted action. And like uh, and uh, anything corrupted that's not pure is never accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah says he's declared very, very boldly and he has a right to declare this. He says, Ana aghna shurakai ani shirk. I'm the most independent. I'm the most independent I'm the one who's least in need of having a partner. Like, what's wrong with you? You want to you have a partner? You want to associate a partner? Do it somebody else. I don't need partners. I'm the most independent and most enriched and uh, most separate from this. Right? I don't need this. I'm, I, I'm self-subsisting. So then that's why I said, then Allah says in a hadith Qudsi, that whoever does a deed in which he has... Uh, brought in anybody besides me uh, in it, then I'm going to leave him and that partner that he's done. Okay, I leave it to you two. You and your purpose, whatever you're doing it for, I leave you guys to it. I don't have to give you anything for it. I don't need any part of this. I don't need it anyway. So why should I take something that's corrupt? You know when there's people who uh, have a lot and then somebody tries to give them a bit half-baked, they're like, man, I don't need this stuff. Like, what, what are you doing? You know, but people who are in need, they'll take scraps. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in any need of anything. What's he going to take? He, he only takes the pure. Right? And you know, you, you go to somebody who's quite up there, you know, well accomplished and everything. You have to think 10 times before you buy them something that is it going to be according to their status. I can't get away with, you know, something half baked with that because it's going to seem silly. So he's saying that whenever there's something besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart, then it means that it is adulterated with those kind of desires. And then that cannot stand in the court of Allah. It's not pure enough. It's not suitable. It's not qualified to be in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran regarding his worldly abode and his worldly places, Keep my house pure for those who go around it. Keep the masjids pure, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to take our best libas and our best adornment in the masjid. It's a place we're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why um, a shushtari, he says, Li uh, habibun innama huwa ghayyur. I've got a beloved, but he's very, very jealous. Protective jealousy. Very, very jealous. But in an honorable jealousy, it's like a dignified jealousy, not like a lowly jealousy, man, why have you got that? This is protective envy. 
It's it, it, it's a jealousy. Like I, you can't impart. Like if you want me, you need to be fully for me. You can't be messing around with others, as the modern world is. No pure relationships. Right? Says he might stay in uh, th- this mahboob of mine. This beloved of mine might be in the heart, but it's like a he's uh, like a like a bird that will just fly off at the slightest disturbance. Very sensitive. We don't want to reduce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kind of sensitive being. He's of such a dignified being that we need to be careful about this. So anybody who's going to protect their actions and secure them with ikhlas and sincerity, then that person, then Allah showers them. Allah accepts it. So just as he's so particular about what he wants, when, he, when you give him what he wants, then there's no end to what he will give you. That's the beautiful part of this. It's well worth it. It's well worth doing the action. It's well worth doing it as pure as possible. And then the person will become of the khawas, which means of the very specially selected ones by Allah. And anybody who becomes specially selected ones, their heart will be free of fear. Likewise, whoever then purifies their heart from anybody else, that heart then will be showered with multiple blessings like knowledge, understanding, wisdom, lights, contentment, satisfaction, all of these things. So things won't bother them as much. And then after that, they will actually start talking a lot more sense, a lot more wisdom, a lot more good things. And people will benefit from these people. Right, so now he breaks it down a bit more, saying that what exactly is a corrupted action? How do you corrupt an action exactly? He says usually three problems corrupt an action. First one is Riyah. We've discussed mainly all of these. I'll just as a summary, I'll mention Riyah, Ujub, Uttalab, Uiwadin. So three things are what corrupt an action. First one is Riyah, which means ostentation, doing it for somebody else. I'm only doing this so that I can, you know, I'm going to sit, I've gone for Umrah, and I really want to take that shot next to the Kaaba doing Tawaf. That just looks so cool. My friend did it. So I have to do it as well. So I have to literally do the whole tawaf, you know, with a, with a, what do you call those? Selfie stick. Yeah. Right. That's what I really want to do. Um, brother, can, can you just do me a favor? I'm going to do dua. Just take a, just take a video of that, right? Like I'm going to really do a really sincere dua. Like just take a video of that so I can learn from it next time. Seriously, people do this. It's just so crazy, but people do it. They've gone to the house of Allah, subhanAllah, millions can't go. And mashallah, Allah has given you so much wealth that you can even video it. You know, for the sake of showing everybody else. I remember once I went to this sheikh with being hajj so many times. Then he goes, hajj, I said, sheikh, how many? He goes, I don't know. I go, what do you mean you don't? He said, I don't know. I don't count how many hajj. What are you going to count for? If one of them is accepted, alhamdulillah, that's enough. Oh, brother, I get to go Umrah every year, man, in Ramadan. No, no, I've never been in Ramadan, actually. I'm just saying it's what some people do. It's like an accomplishment. Say to Allah, Ya Allah, thank you so much that you allow me to go in Ramadan for Umrah. You allow me to go in some other months to Masjid Laqsa. You know, say that to Allah, no problem. Say that shukr. Keep saying that to Allah, but don't, don't keep telling everybody else. So that sh- that's what the hadith was about, that anybody who's going to associate anybody else with me in his action, I'm going to leave that action with the, with the partner. You guys deal with it. So that's riya. Uh, and th- th- that's why the famous hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim, you must all have heard it, that the, the first few people that are going to be thrown into the hellfire is going to be, uh, is going to be the Qari, who read, uh, you know, for the sake of... Uh, other people to say wah wah and wonderful and mashallah alhamdulillah how come you guys aren't saying that the Egyptians are better than you after every ayah the Egyptians say Allah you guys don't even know what you're doing yeah if you go to Pakistan mashallah they stand up and start waving their hands as well have you seen it? those Egyptian qaris in, in Pakistan and other places everybody after every ayah they kind of jump up and start waving their hands it's like some kind of concert subhanallah Okay, they're getting excited about the Quran, but come on, that's not. You're supposed to do tadabbur. 
It's not about, oh, wow, what a wonderful reading. Yes, what a wonderful reading that penetrates my heart. I know we all fall a bit of prey to this beautiful voice. It's, a, it's an attraction of the dunya. It's an ego thing. But yeah, I think we just need to know so that we can move beyond that. I think we're all guilty of getting excited with beautiful voices, beautiful signs, and, uh, and, and you know, beautiful sights, and so on. But it's just about moving beyond that eventually. And then the other one was the brave person in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the warrior for the sake of showing off. And number three is the wealthy person who gives a lot of money, but it's again done to be, to, to be known that my name's on that mosque and it's on that madrasa and it's on that road and, and, and so on. So that, that's riya, okay? That's riya. Now, uh, which is ostentation. Number two, he says, is ujub. Ujub is, uh, it's more of a very personal thing. It's, I think I'm better than everybody else. It's a much more internal, personal kind of thing where a person is just walking high inside. He's just walking on stilts by himself, though he's walking on the ground for everybody else. It's just like, but he's walking on stilts. He's higher than everybody else. So while he may be even shorter than others, he's like looking down at others. Right? It's this mental superiority. That's ujub. It's to see oneself and to attribute all of your actions to yourself, not to Allah. I did that. The worst part is this, that did anybody here, anybody here, did you decide which family you were going to be born in? Did you have any involvement in that? No. What about the color, your complexion? What about whether you were going to be a Khan or a Pathan or a Patel or something like that? No. You just turned up one day like that, right? So how do you show off with something? How do you show off and think yourself superior just because you're from a particular village or you're a certain color complexion? How can you think yourself superior? You didn't have anything to do with it. You should just be thanking Allah if it's good. right? Whatever benefits are in your background or ethnicity or color or complexion or whatever it is, just thank Allah. Otherwise, you, we had no idea. So how can we gloat about something like that that nobody else that's why I just don't get it that's why racism is so crazy racism is just so crazy it's a point of shukr that you should do shukr if you got something superior that you think it's superior and then use it for the benefit of others rather than think yourself superior and then put other people down that's why so uh, this is ujub ujub is this conceitedness a form of narcissism you could say Right, a mental health problem, or you know, you can say, uh, Shaitan had narcissism. That's why he was tunnel visioned, and the only logical point he could come up with was that fire rises and soil is low. Not that fire benefits. Uh, sorry, fire uh, destroys indiscriminately, and soil never destroys. But soil actually is used to grow everything that we need for life. You could have thought of that, right? These are a lot of other points. Even if I told children, like, give me a comparison between fire and soil. You can come up with five different comparisons. He came up with the worst one. And he was blinded of the others. That's what shows that when you love yourself more than anybody else, then you, you will have a tunnel vision. It's very difficult for somebody to explain to you, unless you get clobbered one day with something, where, you know, you just suffer a major setback, then you're like, yeah, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. May Allah protect us. So then that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Do not do tazkiyah of yourself. Don't purify yourself. Don't consider yourself to be pure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most aware of the one who has taqwa. What that means in other words is that if you do an action, don't say, I did this. Yes, you did do it because it happened from your limbs. But ultimately, where did you decide to do it? From where did you get the inspiration? Lots of other people just like you don't do it. You got to do it. You're sitting here today. A lot of people that are your colleagues, your neighbors are not sitting here. They, 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 we don't know what they're doing. They might, inshallah, they're doing other good stuff, but there may be people who are not doing so good stuff. So uh, why are you here? Why are we here sitting here today on this Friday evening? Because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So relate everything back to Allah. Just, I think, you know, what this is telling us is just start relating everything back to Allah, where it's due, and we'll sort ourselves out. I think that's really what it all comes down to. 
just keep going back to it. Just keep relate, remembering Allah. That's really what this is saying. Just like Allah did this for me. Allah allowed me to do it. Thank you Allah. Alhamdulillah. You don't, you don't say Jazakallah to Allah. You say Alhamdulillah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about three very destructive factors which we are seeing a lot today. I think in the, mod, you know, the postmodern world we live in, this is more truer than ever. ever. Thalathun muhlikat, three destructive factors. Number one, shuhun muta'. Avarice and greed that is followed, that is obeyed. Because today you can do that. Society, social culture has broken down to such a degree that you can do what you want that very few people will tell you no. In fact, they look down upon nowadays, whereas people before communally had a much better sense of ethics. So you can see this is worse today. Wahawan muttaba, desires that are followed. And number three is i'jabul, I mean the first two are kind of related. And the first one, the third one is i'jabul mar'i bi nafsi. It's just person conceited, person thinking himself great. A person uh, wonder, uh, in wonderment of himself. Wow, what a, what a human you are. Never think like, who created you as a one? Man, what an accomplishment. Man, look, I've got this and I've got that and I've got that. What a wonderful human I am. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, I don't think that will come back. <laughs> SubhanAllah. It's like, okay, that's fine, but where did you get it from? Who inspired you? Who facilitated the way for you? Who made everything conducive for you to get that? Okay, you've got it now, right? Fine, just turn it around now. Say Allah gave it to you and you'll suddenly see that this will have a bearing on the hereafter in a positive way, not in a negative way anymore. So fine, you're there, no problem. Just change it. Zayd ibn Aslam, uh, he said that La tuzakku anfusak, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't purify yourself. Uh, it means that don't consider yourself to be sorted in the hereafter. Because I've studied for this many years, I give lectures or whatever, I come in the masjid and I see that mashallah there's another brother who's always in the first row. And he hasn't studied as much as me. I think he's better than me. In that sense. Just so that he doesn't think that, yeah, it's okay. I just being the first. I don't have to learn anything. Don't want him to be deceived either. But it's definitely better me than me being in the first le- because he's in the first row and I'm not in the first row. So there's always somebody superior to us. We're not done. We're not sorted. We have some accomplishments as everybody does. Remember, Allah uh, creates everybody with a package of qualities, capabilities, and a package of weaknesses. The success, we should tell our children is this as well. The successful one is the one who's figured out their capabilities so that they can use them for whatever they want. And they've been able to understand their weaknesses and harness them. If you look around, behavioral issues, akhlaq issues, is because people have not recognized what their weakness are. Some people have recognized their strengths. They're really using that, but they have not recognized their weakness. Some people have not even recognized their, their strength. They're just losers or their weakness. Right? So we need to recognize both. And the sooner the better. Successful people, that's who they are. They've recognized both and they've harnessed them in the right way and they've thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He uses a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which says that لَوْ لَمْ تُذْنِبُوا لَخَشِيتُ عَلَيْكُمْ مَا هُوَ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الذنوب الْعُجْبِ If you did not sin... This is actually talking about those people now who think that they're accomplished in the sight of Allah. Their worship is to such a height. And we're not talking about worldly accomplishment anymore. We're talking about people who, mashallah, get to do a lot of worship. And then suddenly the shaitan comes there to make, you, make a person feel that because of their abundant worship, they're better than anybody else and they're guaranteed paradise. So that's why this narration is brought here that, look, if you did not sin... Uh, then I fear upon you something even bigger, some a bigger sin. Meaning in your not sinning, right? If you did not end up sinning, sometimes slip up basically what it means, then I would fear a bigger sin, which is that you'd start becoming self-conceited and start thinking you're, you're accomplished, which is another sin. The whole life is a bit of a struggle, but as long as a person recognizes Allah, then it becomes easy. Uh, one of the uh, one of our pious predecessors said that if I can s- keep, sleep the night, right, sleep through the night and wake up in the morning and I haven't done tahajjud and feel bad about it, he said that's superior than 
I stand many hours of the night in tahajjud and in the morning I just feel like I'm on top of the... T- you can feel on top of the world that, oh, alhamdulillah, look what Allah has given me to do. That's fine. But to think I'm better than everybody else in the community. I doubt if there's anybody in this locality that stands for this long. Do you think there's anybody else? Like Shaitan's going to give us various ideas. You know, I've spent this much money behind this masjid. I've spent all of this effort. I was in this masjid, not this masjid, but any masjid from day one. I was the one who uh, brought the first donation. You know, all of that. And I feel I'm better than anybody else because of that. Not that if I do shukr, then that's fine. Somebody asked Aisha radiallahu anha, when is a person a bad person? When does he do a bad deed? It's when he thinks he's really accomplished and he's doing a good, that he feels that he's just on, he, he's just fully accomplished now. What is, uh, one of the advices that has been given is that anybody who is so enamored by themselves, Right, because mashallah, he does, uh, you know, he, he he does his four months every year, or he volunteers this much time, and you know, whatever other good deeds or uh, that person does. What his issue is is that he's usually going to be because he's just so enamored by himself. He makes you blind to any defects, to any slip-ups, to any weaknesses. The problem with deeds is that it constantly has to be refined. That's the way this world works. Even cooks, if they start just doing it uh, without really focusing, they'll get it wrong one day, even though they've made it 20 times. So any deed in this world, you have to put attention to it. Otherwise, one day you'll go wrong with it. And when that happens, when you're not careful and considerate about what you're doing, then uh, you could actually start sinning. When it comes to deeds. Because you've lost sight of the purpose. You're too enamored by uh, oneself. Now what then happens is that. Because you think you're better than anybody else. You're not even going to ask anybody for advice. And if somebody even volunteers advice. You're not going to take it. You're going to think man this guy is jealous of me. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for safety. And well being from this. And the last one that he said. The third thing that pollutes an action. Is when you're actually seeking a reward for it. Other than Allah. The reward can be Allah. Oh Allah, I want you. Right? I want you to be pleased. If there's any other... Remember, we've, we've talked about that. If you're even looking for the holes of paradise or a certain uh, you know, place that you're looking for or whatever the case is, all of that. Because if that's the case, then Allah is going to say, well, look, if that's what you want, let me see your ikhlas. Let me see how good your deed was. Do I have to accept it? Do I have to give you your reward? You had this... Uh, you thought about this while you were doing the reward. You had this shortcoming while you did while you did this deed. So if there's any corruption in your action, Allah doesn't have to reward you. So it's wrong. Just say, oh Allah, I'm doing this to the best of my ability for you. Thank you for letting me even do this. Whatever thank you means. I mean, what does thank you mean? It's just a gesture. It's like, thank you. You just feel good that I said thank you. But what's the literal meaning of thank you? I guess give thanks. Like I'm grateful to you. That makes a bit more sense. But again, what is that? I'm just expressing my gratitude. Once in Hajj, you, you got these guys from Sindh. They're the ones usually doing the khidma within the camps. Because Sindh is a very hot place. So I think they can stand it down there, right? There is this really nice kid, like 20 something years old. He was serving tea. And I said to him, shukran. He said, brother, why you keep, you, why, you know, I've shukran you get there. Say, jazakallah or something, man. Give me a dua. Like shukran, you're basically saying, thank you. Uh, I'm grateful to you. So I'm expressing my gratitude. Well, give me a dua as well, man. Like, you know, like, uh, may Allah reward you or something. That's a good point. See, nothing wrong with saying shukran or um, thanks. But give a dua as well. Because then you're actually giving. So he wanted duas. Allah bless him wherever he is, whatever he's doing. He taught me something. The heart which is corrupted also has, they're corrupted by three things. Number one is love of the world, uh, love of being special. That's the number two. And number three is uh, a love of anything but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the hereafter. All of those are going to encroach on our ikhlas and our sincerity and take us away from pure tawheed. We need pure tawheed. Pure tawheed is to do things purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what 
Ibn Ata'illah al-Iskandari says, uh, sorry, this is what Shaykh Abdullah Gangohi says in explaining this and finishing it. He says, Association is, associationism is, I don't like that word, in worship is a deed that is contaminated with ostentation. Allah does not love such a deed. Similarly, the heart of associationism is a heart in which is found the love of others besides Allah. And Allah does not love such a heart. Allah Most High loves the heart that contains only His love. When deeds are performed solely for the pleasure of others, they are not acceptable to Allah Most High. Only deeds devoid of ostentation are acceptable to Him. So there's a famous Urdu couplet which says that somebody calling out to Allah, Oh Allah, he's saying, Oh Allah, now please enter. Please enter. Now my heart is clean, cleansed of all else. Now finally I've managed to get all else out. Now please enter. You've not entered until now, but at least now enter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us such hearts. Uh, it sounds very difficult, but I think one lesson that we get from today is very simple, is that just start thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and associating and attributing everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث يا غفار يا فتاح يا الله يا ستار يا حفيظ يا سلام يا لطيف يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أكرمنا اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واهدنا وزقنا اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا هداة لمن اهتدى الله we ask you for your special mercies O oh Allah, we ask you for you. O oh Allah, we ask you for you. O oh Allah, our hearts are polluted. Our actions are polluted. O oh Allah, purify our hearts. Purify our actions. Allow us to at least do some deeds before we depart from this world purely for the sake. O oh Allah, allow us to experience sincerity. Allow us to experience ikhlas. Allow us to experience your love. O oh Allah, allow us to experience that so that everything else can be forgotten. All these, destruction, this, all these distractions can wane in our sight. O oh Allah, allow us to experience that. O oh Allah, grant us the halawat al-iman. Grant us the sweetness of faith. O oh Allah, allow us to attribute everything to you for there is nothing but you. O oh Allah, there is nobody, nothing that can do anything besides you. So oh Allah, allow us to attribute. Allow us to be true in this world. Allow us to have truth in this world. Allow us to be of the sadiqeen, the siddiqeen, and be with the siddiqeen as well. O oh Allah, allow us to draw closer to you. O oh Allah, bless all of our teachers and our mashayikh, all who have taught us good in this world, we, without them, up to the Prophet ﷺ, we would be lost souls. Oh Allah, oh Allah, protect us from the shaitan, protect us from the uh, the punishment of the grave and protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. Oh Allah, keep this deen and ikhlas and sincerity in our families and our progenies until the day of judgment. Oh Allah, we ask you not for our, just ourselves, but for all of us and for our progenies and descendants. And O oh Allah, accept us all for the service of your deen and make us of those who abundantly remember you and who are grateful to you, who have gratitude for you. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillah. The point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules and at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind. You can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion, the next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, 
so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind. You can continue to leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.